The guy I ditched on a date five years ago turned out to be my HR, and I am sure I am about to lose my job. Part 2 When he took his clothes off and got in the shower with me, I was obviously shocked. It took my mind a while to process why he was even here when I did not expect him. I took a step back and glared at him, but he was oblivious. There is nothing quite like taking a cold shower after a long day of running around. It is usually the 15 minutes of the day that I look forward to the most. I think of absolutely nothing when I am in the shower. It is my sanctuary. Therefore, when someone interrupts me on a difficult day, I am not the happiest. Today was such a day. I told my husband that it was a terrible day and headed to the shower as soon as I entered our apartment. His eyes were glued on the game he was playing, but I saw him nod. I do not know where the miscommunication occurred because out of the blue he joined me in the shower. Thought I might join you in the shower. Sorry you had a bad day. I would love to make it better, he said in a seductive voice. He attempted to touch me, but I smacked his hand away. Babe, what's wrong? Alex asked, his eyes wide with confusion. I thought I told you that I wanted to take a shower alone, I responded, annoyed. You did not specify that you wanted to be alone. Besides, we have taken tons of showers together. I do not get what the problem is now, he asked, confusion clear on his face. I felt my irritation increase with each second that he stood there. I had a difficult day. Can I not have 15 minutes to myself? My voice started to rise. I was cranky and all I wanted was to be alone. I know, baby, but we have barely had some alone time together. You came home so late and I have been missing you. His eyes turned a bit glassy. I am so sorry. They are taking too long to hire a replacement for Andrew at work. I have to do everything by myself and also oversee the company operations, I explained. I get it, but a shower together would not hurt, he pouted. You could have asked me to do something with you on the weekend. You know that when I am stressed, I prefer to shower alone. Why did you not think? I asked him. Suddenly, his facial expression changed to one of annoyance. Fine, I will leave you alone with your shower. It is clearly a crime to spend time with you. I cannot believe you, Luca, he said angrily, and then left. This was not the case in the beginning. Our first year and a half of marriage was pure bliss. After we got married in a beautiful ceremony organized by our loved ones, we went on our honeymoon. When we came back, we moved in together. I loved being able to see Alex at any time of the day. At work, we acted professional, but I was so smitten that I could never stop staring at him. I would count down the hours till the end of the day so I could freely show him any love. I sighed as I realized that we were probably not going to sleep that night. Once he got into his head that I did not love him enough, nothing could convince him otherwise. The last thing I needed was a fight, but these days, they were inevitable. I longed for the days when things were so blissful, but they seemed so far away. I loved him, but sometimes he was so unreasonable and demanded so much from me. Sometimes I wished that we did not get married. The next morning. When I woke up in the morning, he had already gotten up. I searched for him throughout the entire house, but could not find him. After a while, I sent him a text. Hey, sorry about last night. I can make it up to you after work, I sent. He read the text immediately and then started typing, but then stopped. After waiting for another 10 minutes, I gave up and got ready for work. Later on that day, I got a text from him which read, Come to our usual spot at lunchtime. We need to talk. I felt shivers go down my spine. That message was not a good sign at all. Wanting to make it in time, I put my head down and got to work. As I was about to leave, a colleague stopped me asking for help. I took a couple of minutes doing that, then went to the restaurant. I saw the back of his head as soon as I entered. Wanting to be funny, I put my hand over his eyes. A moment later, he responded in a monotonous voice. You're late. I gulped and took a seat across from him. Babe, I am sorry. I had to help a colleague out, I said. Your need to constantly prove yourself has cost us precious time. I was ready to forgive you for your little outburst yesterday, but now I don't feel as if you deserve my forgiveness, Alex said too coldly, glaring at me. I sighed and tried to calm down. You are not being fair. You are the one who encouraged me to take this new job, I reminded him. Yes, because you were not happy at my company even after getting a promotion. I mean, what else could I do? When you got headhunted and offered a better deal, I did not want to bring you down, he protested. You say that, but I see the resentment in your eyes. Gosh, I told you that things will settle down soon. You are so impatient, I raised my voice. His eyes narrowed and then he stood up. Oh, so you feel pressured by me. You feel pressured to be with me, right? Then maybe you should have not married me, he spat out those venomous words. I did not say that, Alex. How do you go from zero to 100 so fast? You know what? I am hungry and I need to eat. I am done talking, I concluded. 
Eat all you want because that's all you have time for nowadays, he said and glared at me one last time before turning to leave. So much for making things right. I was left with a pounding heart and tears in my eyes. What had we become? Two days later. After the incident at the restaurant, he gave me the cold shoulder. It was rare for him to remain silent. He usually addressed any matter as soon as it happened. I got worried and tried to talk to him, but he dismissed me and was pretty rude about it. When we met up with our friends later that week, he was still upset and he even sat away from me. And again for the thousandth time I felt how things were blowing out of proportion unnecessarily. My friend Fiona noticed this and caught my eye. She gave me a sympathetic smile before she had to go dish up. We were having dinner and then a game night. Dinner went well. With us catching up on our lives, Fiona even gave us some good news. We're expecting, she exclaimed. Her husband had the biggest smile on his face as he held her belly. I could not help but feel happy warmth all over me. I did also feel a bit envious of them, wishing that we could also have kids. I pushed the thought far away into the back of my mind, though. After we congratulated Fiona, we got started on game night. The whole time, Alex tried to distance himself from me. Every time I tried to joke with him or touch him, I was met with a brick wall. By the end of the evening, I wanted to cry. The moment that made things worse was when I found out that he left without me. Before leaving, I had a conversation with Fiona about the baby. It turned into a long conversation which I cut short since I had to drive us home. When I looked for him, he was nowhere to be found. I called him and he did not answer. I was about to get worried when I received a text saying, I took a cab, you were taking too long. When I read that text, I lost all power. Fiona must have noticed because she brought me in for a hug. Every marriage faces challenges. Things will get better, she consoled me. I don't think I'm cut out for marriage. I love him a lot, but this is painful, I confessed. Maybe couples therapy, she asked. We had a session once and it did not go well. Thanks for the hug. I needed it, but now I have to go, I said, and then I left. A week later. It was a week later and things were getting worse. My workload had decreased, so I cooked dinner for him one night. He spoke to me, but he was so distant. I felt so far from him and the thought of just quitting had come to my mind. At this point, everyone around us was noticing that something was wrong. Inside, I felt that connection I had with him fading. All I wanted was to hold on to him, but he was so far away and wasn't even ready to be there for me. Just when I thought that there would be no reprieve from this torture, Fiona came to my rescue. She sent us a message inviting us to spend a week at her family's resort to celebrate her pregnancy. Couples only. When I got home, I brought up the topic with Alex. Lex, you got Fiona's message, right? I asked. He looked up from his laptop with a blank expression on his face. I cannot go. Besides, are you not busy with work? He asked. Actually, the workload has lessened. I am sure that I can work from home next week, I informed him. I saw the wheels turning in his head and expected him to say no, but he pleasantly surprised me. Sure, I haven't used any of my leave days this week. Let me call Peter for leave approval. It would be nice to be out of the city for a while, he responded. I cannot help but smile. I had a good feeling about this. This would be the perfect way for us to reconnect. I think I will also take leave so I can focus on the experience, I suggested. Suddenly, the most beautiful grin filled his face. His joy reached his eyes and my heart warmed. This was the first time he smiled all week. I guess we better start packing, he beamed. His entire demeanor changed to one of excitement and it made me happy. It made me believe that there was hope for us. A week later. The week leading up to our stay at the private resort was the easiest one we had in ages. We were both so excited and busy with packing that we actually got back to being nice to each other. We were not completely okay, but it was better than the past few weeks. Due to the improved energy in the household, the countdown was very quick. Soon, we got on our flight to the town where the resort was. Fiona and her husband said they would meet us there since it was the same town as her parents' house, so it was just us for the entire journey. Once we landed, we had an hour's drive to the resort. We played our road trip playlist and sang our hearts out, which made everything that much sweeter. By the time we got there, we were in high spirits and excited to see the others. We were too pumped from the trip to sleep, so we lounged by the pool and spoke about how beautiful the resort was. As we were conversing, I got a message from Fiona. Hey, sorry to do this to the two of you, but we need to go back to the city. There has been a crisis at work and Julio won't let me travel alone. You two can stay at the lodge for the whole week. Everything is arranged, the text read. Is everything okay? Alex asked. I am unsure. 
I've just gotten a text from Fiona telling us that she and Julio cannot join us for the week. She said we must enjoy our week here. I quickly brought him up to speed. He nodded in an understanding manner and said, Tell her we are thankful for the holiday and sorry that she could not make it. I did as he asked, then we went back to lounging by the pool. The sun hit so perfectly, the cocktails gave a buzz, and the new environment all raised our spirits. Alex was back to his usual self, cracking jokes and lightly flirting with me. We still had some physical distance between us, but it was not that extreme. I wanted to lay there forever and talk to him, but soon it was dinner time. And, unexpectedly, it went better than I could have imagined with Alex feeding me with his hands. That night, we forgot all that we had suffered through. We laughed, joked, and adored each other. By the end of dinner, we were so tired that we went straight to bed. Before sleeping, he suddenly pulled me closer and held me tight. All I felt was pure peace. Two days later. The next two days at the resort were heaven. We woke up, had breakfast, bathed, and took a walk around the entire resort. We even took many pictures to send to Fiona. Afterward, we had a picnic in a meadow. Later, we were so tired that we fell asleep in the shade of a tree. I was the first one to wake up due to the weather changing. I woke him up with a delicate kiss on his forehead and we ended up sharing our first kiss in weeks. That kiss was so filled with love, passion, and longing that my heart felt like it would give in. I could not believe that I had ever been upset with him due to how much I loved him at that moment. The next day, we decided to explore the town, which was a wonderful idea. There were so many sights and sounds, we ended up at an arts and crafts market where I bought him a beautiful beaded bracelet. It had his favorite colors, as well as a cute heart. It was both a declaration of my love as well as an apology for all that had happened. When we got home, we went straight to our room, which I had decorated with beautiful lilies. Our favorite songs were also playing softly over the music. He was so shocked but elated when he saw what I did for him, he would not stop telling me how much he loved me. Thank you for making the past few days special. You make my life worth living. Alex gushed as he melted into my arms. I could not help but be elated at how everything was looking out. Maybe we were not so doomed anymore. When he left my arms, I poured us some champagne, and then I brought out my gift. Babe, I know the past few weeks have not been easy, but I wanted to let you know that I love you a lot. I am so sorry for being so distant. I really want to fix things between us if you will let me. I poured my heart out to him as I brought out the bracelet. This is to say sorry for how distant I have been with you. You do not deserve that. I want things to change, I added, as he took the bracelet. Tears fell down his cheeks, and he brought me in for a hug. I love you so much. I cannot imagine life without you, he responded. Later that night. Later that night we lay in bed, talking about our future and the kind of house we wanted to buy. I could see it all in my mind's eye and could not stop grinning from ear to ear. As we were talking, I brought up something that had been on my mind lately. I had been waiting for the perfect opportunity, and now was perfect. I have been having baby fever ever since Fiona fell pregnant. I wonder what it would be like if we had kids, I suddenly said. Within seconds, I felt his breathing change. Kids? I'm not sure about that, he expressed. You might be unsure now, but I'm sure one day you might consider the idea, I said, already envisioning our future. Now that I had said the thought out loud, I realized how deep my desire ran. I do not want kids, ever. I do not know what made you think I would, Alex said so coldly, that it almost brought tears to my eyes. Wow, okay, I had no idea, I sighed sadly. You already do not have time for me. Now you want to add a kid to that, he carried on. I felt my mood darken as he snatched away the dream from me. Suddenly, I did not feel like talking to him anymore, so I shut up. I am not a big fan of that idea. Please do not bring it up again, he said and then he turned over. I was left feeling shaken and hurt, and though he was right next to me, I felt the gap between us widen. I had no idea that things were about to get worse. A week later. The last four days at the retreat were horrible after that conversation. We gave each other the silent treatment and kept to opposite ends of the house. I was upset with him for denying me a child, and he was also upset with me for what I did not know, cause him being upset at me for wanting a child was just crazy. I thought of all I had compromised for the relationship and wondered if I made a mistake. I knew my heart was not in it when I googled divorce lawyers on the drive to the airport. When we got home, we barely even spoke. It felt like a spark had died between us. We did not even have the energy to argue anymore. We were so done. When I went back to work a day later, I was stressed and sad. 
Every couple of minutes, I had to fight myself from crying. One day, I ended up screaming after I accidentally erased some values on a spreadsheet. Why? I screamed and put my head down. I felt like just walking out and going for a drive, but I was interrupted by a voice. Would you like some tea and a cupcake? A little voice asked. I looked up and it was the most adorable little girl. I was a bit perplexed about where she came from, so I just looked at her. As I was staring at her, she started to set up a toy tea set on my desk and carried on speaking. When I am sad, I drink tea and have cupcakes. Trust me, it works, she said as she grinned at me. At that point, I thought, why not? The little human seemed to be onto something. So, I put my work away and had tea with her. She talked a lot, which was amazing. She told me all about her dad her school, and all her toys. She had the funniest stories and I did not even notice the minutes going by. As I engrossed in one of her stories, a man peeped through my office door. He breathed a sigh of relief when he saw her. OMG, princess, you cannot just leave without telling me, the man said. I observed him for a while. He was well built, with neat hair and a handsome face. Hi. She wandered in here. She told me that her dad was somewhere in the building. I guess you are her dad? She said she would go back after the tea party, I explained. Thank you so much for taking care of her. I am so sorry if she bothered you, he apologized. It is okay. We had a pretty enjoyable tea party, right? I turned to her. She beamed a face of innocence after making her dad run around. Sorry she had to keep you from your work, sir, he apologized again. A small break was needed. I was overloading myself with information, I admitted. I hate when that happens. I do it myself as well. A small break usually solves the problem, the man responded. I will do so. Thank you, Mr. I asked. He beamed, and then he said, Derek, this is my daughter Layla, he said. As soon as he said his name, I realized who he was. He was Derek, the CEO's son, who had just returned from overseas. I had heard about him and his daughter before leaving. He must have come back during my absence. I am Luca. It is nice to officially meet you, sir. We were not formally introduced due to my brief absence, I informed him. Ah, the brains behind our new strategy in the flesh. I am honored to be in your presence. He made a tiny bow. A small giggle escaped my lips before I could even think. Stop, you'll give me a big head, I pretended to fan myself. His eyes twinkled with surprised laughter as well, which made me smile even more. Dad, I'm hungry, his daughter suddenly said. It was then that we remembered she was in the room. He said his goodbyes and said he hoped to see me around. After they both left, I noticed that my mood had greatly improved. I felt a bit lighter and did not once think about my husband, and after this brief but amazing time with Layla, I could not stop thinking about how desperately I wanted a baby in my life. A week later. Over the next week, I interacted a lot with Derek at work. Sometimes it was just a casual conversation with him, but other times we discussed work. I found him funny and charismatic. Every time I was with him, I felt my mood uplifted. When I discovered that I was going to be working with him closely for a month, I was overjoyed. Home had all but become a war zone. We were back to fighting regularly, and everyone was starting to notice. I held on to a little hope, but that dwindled every day as I found myself heading closer towards a divorce. One evening, after an intense work session, Derek asked if I could stay for a drink, and I decided to stay for one drink. After a few sips, he sighed and leaned back in his chair. I needed this after the day I had, he declared. Yes, work was very tiring today, I agreed with him. Not just with work. Ellie's mother was bothering me again, he said. Does she want Ellie back? Come to think of it, you have never spoken about Ellie's mom before, I noted. I made a big mistake back in my party boy era. I was struggling to come to terms with my sexuality and so desperate to prove myself that I made some risky choices. Ellie's mom was one of those choices, he confessed. We all make mistakes. On the bright side, you got Ellie, I said. Yes, I would not trade her for the world. The years I was closeted were some of the most troubling in my life. I wish I could have been like you, so confident in your sexuality, Derek remarked admiringly. I felt myself blush a little bit under his gaze. Well, I was not always like this, I brushed the whole thing off. I get it. It is a process, but yeah, her mom barely does anything. I am a single dad. I long to have someone to help me, but not everyone wants to date a single dad, he shrugged. I wish we could exchange lives. I wish that I had a child of my own, but my husband does not want kids, so that whole thing is out of the question, I sighed. He patted my shoulder empathetically, and for a while, I felt much better. Did you not discuss this before getting married, he asked. 
Strangely enough, no, I responded. Would you have married him if he had said he did not want to ever have kids, he asked? To that question, I had no answer. I was silenced, but his question put a lot of thoughts in my mind, the foremost of them being how I might not have married Alex at all if I knew how he did not want babies. But I did not tell any of this to Derek. He gave me an understanding look and changed the topic, which I appreciated a lot. After I finished my drink, I headed home. Over the next few weeks, we fell into a pattern. On the nights that we worked together, we would end the night with a drink and a chat. I used to think about those little chats every time before falling asleep, and they made me happy, though also a bit guilty about how it was not Alex who made me happy anymore. With each deep conversation I had, I realized just how much of an amazing person he was. He was kind, attentive, and hardworking. He was the only peace I had in my life amongst all the chaos. One weekend, Alex went to visit his mom without telling me. I had bought tickets for us to go to a comedy show. Hearing that he would not make it greatly disappointed me, and I was even hurt that he did not inform me about it. I did not even feel like going on my own, as it would not be as fun. As I was looking at the tickets, Derek entered the room. He looked very cheery and bubbly, with an extra pep in his step. I must have looked at him weirdly because he explained immediately, My mom is taking Ellie for the weekend. I have not had a free weekend in a while. Oh really? What do you plan to do on this weekend? I asked. Maybe do some reading or take a walk? He answered. Or go with me to a comedy show? Alex cancelled on me, I suggested. You know what? Yes, he beamed. I felt joy spread out through my body when he agreed. If there was anyone I would have loved to watch a comedy show with, it was him. The next night. After watching the comedy show, we had some dinner as we discussed the show. I was buzzing with joy since I had not laughed in so long. We continued to have dinner and then afterward, we each went our separate ways. When I woke up, he had sent me a message saying, Hey, would you like to play some pool with me? I immediately responded saying, Of course, be right there. I was so excited to see him in a way I had not been excited to see anyone else before. Deep down, I was concerned and somewhat guilty about my deepening feelings, but I kept myself in check. I spent the day with him, playing pool and talking about our lives. The more I found out about him, the more fascinated I got. A few days later, I felt more peaceful lately having a friend like Derek who beamed with positivity. I even started radiating that peace at home and it seemed like Alex was mirroring me because one night, even he was in a good mood, which was kind of rare nowadays, so I took this opportunity and asked him if he wanted to have a movie night. Alex was a bit shocked at first and I felt he would just make some excuse soon to avoid spending time with me, but I was surprised when he said, I'd love it, so what are we watching? I haven't decided yet. Maybe you could pick a movie while I get the popcorn, I smiled at him and could almost read his mind when his lips turned up slightly in a playful smirk. But none of those horror movies you love so much, they give me the creeps, I added. And that's exactly why Alex chose the scariest movie he could find, just like old times. This is what Alex always did because he loved how I got all scared and snuggled closer to him with each horror scene. This semblance to our old life actually brought some hopes back again in my mind, which I had dug deep within. And this is exactly why I decided to take my chance again thinking Alex might agree. An hour into the movie, I was almost too close to Alex holding on to him for dear life and he seemed to be enjoying how scared I was. Though I was scared, it was the closest we had been in a long time so I tried my luck out. Obviously, it went south from there. Babe, can't you consider it once for me, for us? I asked him looking hopefully in his eyes, assuming he would understand how desperately I wanted it and might actually melt for me. He paused the movie, turning to me half annoyed. What are you talking about? Us having a baby, I said quietly, the hope inside me slowly seeping out as his face turned red from calm to angry. Are you freaking kidding me, Luca? I told you already that I don't even want to talk about this, lest want a baby, he said while pulling away from me. But I tried to reason with him, but he was quick to cut it in the middle. Did you really have to bring it up right now? We are finally getting along after so long, but of course, you had to ruin it all like everything else. The final words left his mouth, and with that, all the hope for us to be normal ever again left my body. I just got up, grabbed my pillow from the bed, and left to sleep on the couch while Alex was shouting at me to stop, but I just couldn't. I knew I was done. The next night. The effects of the fight me and Alex had last night followed me well into the next day at work, and Derek noticed it and tried to take my mind off things. That night, we finished work early and relaxed on his patio. 
He was sort of flirting and I was responding. The fact that I was extra pissed at Alex did not help. I ranted it all out to him and he listened to all my whining quietly and then said, If you were mine, I would make sure that you were happy every single day, he said, stopping my heart. You should not say dangerous things, I said looking away so that I could hide the heat rushing to my cheeks. Why? he asked. I do not want to do something I will regret, I pointed out the obvious reason, still unable to look at him. I know, but I was just being honest. You are the full package. You are handsome, sweet, intelligent, and so good to my daughter. I am envious of Alex, he noted. His words touched me deep in my soul, and for a moment, all the other thoughts evaporated. I looked deep into his eyes, expecting the usual teasing grin. Instead, I was met with sincerity. That blew my mind. Before I knew what was happening, we had moved closer to each other. The silence was deafening, and all one could hear was our breathing. He suddenly moved closer to me and was just an inch from kissing me, but I pulled away. He immediately had a hurt expression on his face, but I could only say, I am sorry, I can't, my husband. That's all I needed to say, and though he was hurt, he told me he understood. And with that, I left him there. I know I might have hurt him, but I could not cheat on Alex. Two nights later. The next two days were very awkward between myself and Derek. On the one hand, I wished that I had kissed him. I desperately missed his company, but on the other, I was bound by the vows that I had made. I was bound by the love I had for Alex, even though it had probably long departed. I found myself at a crossroad and something had to give. One evening, I got a text from Derek while I was having dinner with Alex. He was reacting to a funny meme that was on my story, and we got to talking about that. The awkwardness of the past few days faded, and I ended up laughing out loud. Good to know you can still laugh, Alex suddenly said. What? I asked. You can still laugh with other people, not me, he clarified. I tried to explain myself, but then he just got up. Wonder who it is that is making you laugh so much, he said, as he slammed the bedroom door behind him. Three days later. I was not happy. It was clear, and I was just trying to lie to myself about being happy. In all honesty, I preferred anyone else's company over his. I just did not know how to say it. One night, I got home early and cooked Alex's favorite dinner for him. I just wanted a couple of days of peace, so I was essentially bribing him. When he came home, he was shocked to see me but pleasantly surprised by the dinner. We had a proper conversation for the first time in weeks, and it was so refreshing. He told me all about what was happening in his family and about how work was going, and I listened attentively. And then he said something that just broke me, and I had to say something. We should look at buying property together. We can make so much money and have more time for romance, Alex said. I could not anymore. I have to say something. Babe, I have something to tell you, I started. Yes, babe, what is it? This year has been difficult on the both of us, and I take full responsibility for my part in it. Our love has been tested so many times, and it broke my heart. I have been hoping that by some miracle, things will get better, but they have not. Even though my whole being ached right now. From the pain of our broken relationship, I still love you a lot, I said as I held his hand. Oh, babe, I am so sorry for my part as well. It hurts me too, but I love you, he said. I know, but I have recently felt as if love is not enough. There is no easy way to say this, but I want a divorce, I spat it out. He was silent for a moment as he looked at me in shock, and then the tears started falling and he uttered a broken, What? I cannot do this anymore. I love you, but I cannot. You not wanting a child was the final straw, I said. Our love should be enough. You do not even want to try, he furrowed his eyebrows. I am tired of trying. All we do is fight, I responded. Because you want things to go your way and you are selfish. Who is he, Alex asked. He glared at me for a moment and then the next thing I knew, he removed the bracelet I gave him and put it on the table. He is someone who has been making me very happy, I confessed. Alex looked taken aback, in so much pain. I tried to touch his hand, but he pushed me back. I know that what I did was wrong, and that is why I wanted to throw you this dinner to say sorry. I was crying at this point. I never cheated on you, but I would not deny that amongst all this chaos, I started to develop an attachment towards someone, and I am genuinely sorry for that. But it's not him that's the problem, it's us. We want different things. Get out of my apartment right now, he said in a very cold voice. This was expected. Why would he want me in his sight? I am sorry, I said one more time before I stood up. I was floored, speechless. I got up before he could see my tears and headed to our room. I stood there, shell-shocked, that I had actually done it. My heart was bleeding, 
from the loss of him, but I could not lie and pretend anymore. We deserved better. Slowly, I started to pack. All this as memories of our time together played in my head. I wanted to erase those last few minutes, but I could not. He ended up coming into the room and packing my things for me. I was not even given the chance to process it all. I packed a bag and then left. As I was leaving, I sent a message to Derek. Hey, I do not have a place to sleep tonight. Can I sleep over for one night? I sent. He responded instantly. What happened? I asked Alex for a divorce. I responded as the first tear went down my face. The marriage was over so long ago, before Derek. Spending time with him had showed me that I did not need to stay in a dead marriage. It was unfair to me and to Alex. Of course you can spend the night, he responded. He allowed me to spend the night at his house for the rest of the week while I got an apartment. Shortly after, Alex and I started the divorce proceedings. It was difficult for me to let him go, but I knew that I could not love him the way that he needed. In addition to that, I refused to spend the rest of my life resenting him because he did not want kids. Derek was there for me during the entire process, and in that time, our connection deepened. I fell more in love with him each day. In addition, it felt like my dream of having a child was fulfilled because I was able to be in Ellie's life. Slowly, the hole Alex left was filled by Ellie and Derek. And even though Alex was furious with me at the start, he understood that this needed to be done. He met me once after the divorce was finalized and told me that, though he still missed me, there was no hard feelings. Soon enough, he got back to dating again. When his friend introduced him to a guy, I was genuinely happy for him. While Derek and I took our time to work on the relationship, he moved to a different branch of the company to make the relationship easier for us. My relationship with Derek was much easier and had less pain than the one with Alex. Even when we faced difficulties, they brought us closer instead of tearing us apart. With time, him, myself, and Ellie became a family of our own. The End Is having kids a deal breaker in a relationship for you? Thanks for watching. Consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to support our Rainbow Force. And stay wholesome.